Hello, welcome to Double Strike Recap. Today I'm gonna review an action thriller movie from 2017. Acts of Vengeance. Spoilers ahead. The film begins by showing a man with sunglasses walking into a restaurant. He seemed like a very quiet man. Even when the waitress offered him the menu, he remained silent. However, behind his silence, it turns out that he has very sharp ears. He could even hear whispers from far away. Because of that ability, he could hear voices from the kitchen. He then stood up and entered the kitchen, then locked the door from the inside. After that, he immediately attacked a chef. Who is this guy? Why would he attack the guy? It would be answered later. The scene then moves to the past. He is Frank Valera. He used to be successful and competent lawyer. He lives in a mansion with his wife Sue Valera and daughter Olivia Valera. The most important words in his job is, not guilty, and the most important words in his personal life is, I love you. The words were always spoken to his daughter and wife. One day, Olivia had performance in the school show. She calls Frank because he has promised to watch her performance. But in the end Olivia had to endure the disappointment, because when she checked the stands before the show started, she only saw her mother there. In fact, Frank had been trying to make it in time, but he was stuck with his job. After his work was done, he rushed to the venue for the show, but unfortunately he was too late. The show is over. Frank went home, but it turned out that Sue and Olivia had not yet returned. He tried to call his wife several times but did not pick up. Frank could only wait anxiously as the day wore on. His worries grew when the police came to his house. In the next scene, the cop informs him that Sue and Olivia have died, and now he asks Frank to come with him to the train yard, where the bodies of Sue and Olivia are dumped by the killer in a pit. As soon as he saw them, Frank rushed over as if he wanted to hug them, but the police stopped him. The scene moved to Sue and Olivia's funeral. This man is Chuck, Frank's father-in-law. Chuck had always disliked Frank, and his hatred only grew after the tragic deaths of Sue and Olivia. Chuck blamed Frank for what had happened to Sue and Olivia. He thought it was all karma because of what Frank had done. As a lawyer, Frank was only willing to defend important and rich people, regardless of whether they're right or wrong. He ended their conversation by saying that he didn't want to hear Frank say another word to him. Frank has been living in sorrow. Every day he is haunted by guilt over the death of those he loves the most. He spent his time in Olivia's room holding her doll and reading her notes. However, one day, Frank goes to the police station to inquire about the case of the deaths of Sue and Olivia. He met with Lustiger, the detective who handled the case. Lustiger explained that based on the investigation results at the crime scene, his team found golden threads. But the discovery was not enough to be used as real evidence. Furious over the slow performance of the police, Frank could only express his sorrow by getting drunk. After drinking a dozen glasses of alcohol, he went behind a bar and went downstairs, where he accidentally saw a wild fight with a large crowd. Frank, who is drunk, deliberately provokes one of the fighters into beating him. Surprisingly, the next day he took part in the game as one of the fighters. He did it as an outlet for his failure to protect Sue and Olivia. But Frank, who has no martial arts skills, can be easily defeated by other fighters. He always suffered defeat and came home with a bruised face and broken bones, until one day, he was beaten by one of the fighters until he was seriously injured. Luckily he was saved by a man, Hank Strode. He was the cop who had brought Frank to the train yard. While chatting in a cafe, Strode admitted that he also participated in the illegal fight just to relieve stress. He didn't expect to see Frank become a fighter there. Furthermore, Strode said that the investigation was temporarily suspended. Frank exploded when he heard the news. He certainly couldn't accept it, but he couldn't do anything about it. On the way home, a girl approached him. The girl peddled herself to Frank, but Frank refused. Frank thought it was inappropriate. When Frank asked how old she was, she said she was 13. Suddenly, a man came and forced to pick up the girl. Frank rebukes him but he attacked Frank. Frank countered, and suddenly, she stabbed Frank in his left thigh with a knife. John bounced into the glass and fell into a bookstore. 
Seeing the blood pouring out of his wound, Frank took a book to cover the wound. He staggered out of the shop to hide from the police. In hiding, Frank reads the book that was used to cover his wound. It was a book about Marcus Aurelius' meditations. Inadvertently, he read the part of the book about the punishment of crimes for those who confessed. Furthermore, every day, Frank continued to read the book which provided a deep motivation for Frank to study martial arts from karate to boxing. At the beginning of his training, Frank was always easily overpowered by his coaches. However, his skills continued to improve until he was finally able to beat his karate coach during a fighting practice session. His boxing practice also shows satisfactory progress, his punches are getting harder. One day, Frank drew a line on the mouth of a man on the cover of a book he was reading, indicating that from that moment on he vowed not to say a word until he could take revenge on the killers of his wife and daughter. Surprisingly, after that, Frank's hearing was sharper than usual, to the point where he could hear even the smallest sound. The next day, Frank visits the place where the bodies of Sue and Olivia was founded. There, he found a container that occupied. The container has a hole overlooking the place where the bodies of Sue and Olivia were found. Unable to find any clues, Frank returned to his car which was parked near an overpass. When he got there, he saw four thugs trying to gouge his car. The thugs even forced Frank to give up his car keys. Frank, who had sworn not to speak, was silent as the thugs threatened him. Then one of the thugs ordered his dog to attack Frank. But miraculously, the dog just barked, as if he was hesitant to attack Frank. But when Frank glared at the dog, the dog immediately ran away. A fight ensues in which the four thugs attack Frank simultaneously. However, Frank was able to defeat them all. Frank then grabbed one of the thugs and showed him a picture of Sue and Olivia. But the thug knew nothing about the murder case, so Frank let him go. But just as Frank was about to get into his car, another thug shot him. With his injured body, Frank was still able to beat the thug. Before long, the dog that had run away came back and approached Frank after seeing that he was injured. At the same time, the four thugs hurried away, unaware that Frank had fallen unconscious beside his car. When he woke up, Frank was in a house occupied by a nurse named Alma. Next scene, after introducing herself, Alma informed Frank of his condition when she found him at the train yard. Frank didn't respond and refusing to speak. Frank even left without saying thank you, even though Alma intended to treat his wound. Outside Alma's house, the dog was waiting for him. The dog followed Frank wherever he walked. Seeing this, Frank decided to take the dog to his house. Every day, Frank continues to collect evidence to uncover the killers of Sue and Olivia, from newspaper clippings to photographs related to the murder case. One afternoon, Alma came to return Frank's wallet that he left at her house. Frank invited Alma in. Unexpectedly, Alma found out the reason Frank refused to speak. Then, Frank showed Alma the photo of Sue and Olivia, as well as the evidence he had gathered. With Alma's help, Frank was able to identify the occupants of the container near the crime scene. The occupant of the container, according to Alma, works in a restaurant. Then Frank visits the restaurant to meet the container's occupant, a cook nicknamed Mr. Shivers. This scene is shown at the beginning of the film where Frank comes to interrogate Mr. Shivers. Frank beats Mr. Shivers to a pulp, before showing a picture of Sue and Olivia. Shivers finally confessed that he saw their murder, but he couldn't see the killer's face clearly. Shivers could only confirm that the culprit was wearing a police uniform, and he left the crime scene in a car. Mr. Shivers himself admitted that he only took money from the wallet that was left in Sue's car. After that, he threw the wallet away. To prove Mr. Shivers' words, Frank returns to inspect the crime scene. However, this time, he came with his new dog which proved to be very useful. The dog found Sue's purse in the manhole. Frank then visits the police station, where he sneaks into Lustiger's room and opens the data on his computer. Frank wants to know who the police were on duty when Sue and Olivia died. Surprisingly, he saw Strode's name. Frank had a hard time believing what he had found. He doubts that Strode killed his wife. So, 
To find out his motives, Frank followed Strode wherever he went for seven days and seven nights. One day, as Frank follows Strode to his house, he sees Strode leaving his house. Frank sneaks into the house looking for evidence. In the living room, he saw a photo of Strode with his little daughter. Then when he went to the wardrobe, he found one of Strode's police uniforms which had one of the gold threads loose from an embroidered sleeve badge. The gold thread reminded Frank of the evidence Lustiger had found some time ago. Curious, Frank dug deeper into Strode's wardrobe. He found a secret passage in the cupboard which contained a backpack. The backpack contained several magazines reporting on Frank attending Sue and Olivia's funeral, as well as when Frank was still a lawyer. One of the news articles reported that he had succeeded in freeing the perpetrators of the murder of Strode's daughter. That afternoon, when Strode had returned home, he found a photograph tucked into the windshield of his car. On the back of the photo, Frank wrote a message asking Strode to meet him at Kingsman Station at 11.00 tonight. Their meeting place was an empty warehouse at the station. Strode got out of his car warily. But Frank had gone into hiding. He suddenly attacked Strode, and a moment later, a fight broke out. Both of them have balanced martial arts skills. But at the end of the fight, Frank, who gets the chance to stab Strode, suddenly decides to let Strode live. Frank managed to overcome his lust for revenge. At the end of the film, Frank is seen exiting the courthouse, where he had just attended the trial of Strode who had been convicted of his crimes. Afterwards, Frank, accompanied by Alma, visits the graves of Sue and Olivia. In front of the graves, Frank ended his vow not to speak, and the first words that came out of his mouth were, I love you. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.